What's going on, everybody? Welcome to Movie Talk to Henry Bagash. You need for all your movie news, movie reviews, and more. Episode 114. Let's go. It's not our last dance, but it definitely is a Venoms. <laughs> See what I did there? See? Yeah, it wasn't terrible. Yeah, thank you, thank you. Well, look, if we were <laughs> if we were going to go back in time and we could cut some time, it's not my worst. It's not my best, but we are in the Netflix special time cut. It's like we're carving out a little bit of movie history right here. <laughs> I think that's the best I've ever done. Yeah, no, it's can... not great, but neither is the name Time Cut. So, excuse me, give come me on, credit. Come on. come on, come on, I'll give you credit for ones that are half decent. I think that was beautiful. No, mm. you, just said, you just said a bunch of words that happened to have the word Time Cut in it. Oh, come on, mate, We're cutting come some on, time mate. and then time can cut. Mm. That was beautiful. Yeah. No, I was all right, <laughs> whatever, <laughs> whatever. You're a hard, you're a hard audience. All right, well, when am I not? Ugh, ugh. Uh, when it's like just has the word fallout in it and it could just be anything uh i can be critical of fallout i didn't no, you like can't. fallout 76 oh, oh, i feel like you do now though no nope, i've tried multiple times to try again and try again and i still can't do it okay okay well did you ever play the house of dead the arcade game 100 percent. yeah mm. yeah well guess what Paul W.S. Anderson is working on a new House of the Dead movie. You didn't mention based. the third movie, but... What? You didn't mention Carved. Did you mention Carved? Yeah, I said we're carving out some movie history. And oh, then it's... okay. I didn't, uh, even, I didn't even notice that one. See? Right. See? Beautiful. I didn't even notice you say the word Carved. Mm, see, it was just that quick. It's like a ninja. Sure. A sure. lyrical ninja. Yeah. Okay. My apologies. I yeah, missed out you. on the on the on the lyrical ninja. <laughs> it was just pop smoke, and now we're into House of the the new House of the Dead movie, which is based on the classic Sega horror game. Do you know who Paul W. S. Cool. Anderson is? Paul you know W. S. What? Anderson. No, don't look it up. Do you know what movies he brought us? No. He has brought us to the world of Resident Evil. Oh, okay. What? Four of them, three, yeah, sure. four, four, no, five of them. Resident Evil, Apocalypse, Extinction, Afterlife, uh, Retribution. Oh, and the final chapter. Okay, way more. Death Race, and oh, also, Jesus. and also Monster Hunter. So, oh my god, that's not a good oh, record. And Alien vs Predator. Yeah, they're all crap. <laughs> they're all they're all two and a half or below. I enjoyed every single movie of those. Of course, you did. You you can't say you didn't enjoy Death Race. I can enjoy Death Race, but not the way they want me to. Did you enjoy it? I had fun. Mm, did you enjoy I a- Alien vs Predator? Not really. No, oh, I did. Did you enjoy Resident Evil? First one's good. Come on. First one again. I think it's it's set in its time. I haven't watched it in the past like ten years. Uh, it terrified me. The AI girl terrified me. That was the scariest thing about the entire show. Yeah, it freaked I, me out. I did it. I did it. And that, the fucking laser scene is still like a classic that's, you know, still talked about to this day. Yeah. The laser slicing up the body parts and stuff. Like, yeah, there are parts to like. Mm. Well. But they're not, they're not good movies, you know what I mean? Like, <laughs> oh, Mr. Art House, we can't just enjoy... <sighs> All right. <laughs> <laughs> I can just enjoy movies. I love I love Mean Girls and I love uh fucking other garbage. <laughs> the second Matrix movie, that's not art housey at all. That's just you enjoy the second action. One. More than the first one? Not saying more than the first, but the first the first is is a good is a good movie. It's well made. There's it's really good. We're well paced. It's a really good movie. The second is just a dumb schlock action film, but I still really enjoy it. I know Kung Fu. Still love that scene. It's yeah, just really stop trying to hit me, hit me. Yeah, that's yeah. one of the best fucking scenes ever. Yeah. Uh we've got a. There you go. We've got a new Valentine Day slasher called Heart Eyes. A new uh, teaser trailer. Really? It is about a uh, Valentine slasher who has hearts for eyes. It looks horrible. Oh, cool. Mm. It looks like the purge mm. mask. Mm. Instead of crosses, it's 
arts. I actually really enjoyed Purge. It scared me, but Purge one's cool. Mm. Yeah, cool movie, cool concepts. Mm. Been done to death since. Yep. Uh, Deadpool and Wolverine coming to streaming um, confirmed for November, so it's coming very soon. We have the Wayne brothers to reunite on a scary mm. movie reboot. That's going to be interesting. Yep. That's... I'm very surprised because they they were pissed when they weren't asked to do number three or they were like sacked or whatever. I don't know what the situation was, but they were actually mad and they did all these fucking interviews and stuff like the show can't go on without us and it's going to be garbage and whatever. And they're coming back for a sixth. I'm very surprised. Very surprised. Yeah, I don't know. Is It's more of like a timepiece. Like we were talking about this last week about the, the parody movies. Are they going to hit yeah. as well these like for this audience? Yeah, I think I think scary movies are always like they're not timeless, but there's always so many they're they're rooted in sub in uh in pop culture, and yeah. I think that it'd be like in a modern day superhero movie. Like there's there's so many references to draw from, and whether you watch them or not, you it's impossible to be in the dark with superhero movies with scary movies. I think yeah. anyway. Yeah. I think it's a pretty safe bet, but like you say, it's it's. I don't know they could they could make it as good because what made the first so funny would be inappropriate these days. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's a different time, different time. Yeah, but do you know what is continuing? Which was a really good piece of film back in the day. It was Jumanji, and now Jumanji Three is set for a Christmas twenty twenty six release date. So we're going to see is. The Rock, Kevin the Rock. Hart. And Jack Kevin Black. Hart, Black Jack Black, yep. Yep. So they're, they're coming back. Mm. Those three, man, they're just fucking raking in the dollars. Yeah, you know, got to do it. And then uh, one that I'm kind of interested in because I really like Blue Mountain State and also Reacher. It is Alan oh, Richardson yeah. to lead yep. in a new action movie uh, from the writer of John Wick. I reckon he's great. He actually plays Thad Castle, like the the jock lunatic, really, really well. And yeah. also a hard ass in Reacher, he plays really well as well. Sure. So, what's the new thing called? Uh, I don't think it's been. Okay. Too... So the the woman who took down the predator in Prey is also starring alongside of him. So she was as strong as Arnie. Uh, I think it's called The Painter. The Painter. Yeah. So I don't sure. know. Sure. Don't know much about it. It's just announced that they're going to be starring in it. So we'll see. I don't know. Everything these days is the new John Wick. Mm. It's, it's thrown around so much. So we'll see. Whatever. Uh, Patrick, Patrick Dempsey is keen for Scream 7 return. Oh, sure. Yeah, of course they will. I'm fine with that. Yeah. And then the last bit of movie news, which leads us into our first one off the rank, Spider-Man 4 is starring Tom Holland, which is set for a summer 2026 summer uh, release. Oh, go watch Jumanji and fucking... Would you submit the the Spider-Man the same time? Oh, wait, no. Uh, One's going to be Christmas, one's going to be summer. I will be watching Spider-Man 4. I'm sure we will be. You wake me. Yeah, we will. We'll, <laughs> we'll still be making episodes by then. We should go together and we should record it. And you being all sad and gloomy like a muppet in the corner yelling abuse. And I'll be if I pay for a movie, though. if I pay for a movie, I seem to like flick a switch where I want myself to enjoy it more because I've put money into it. You get fr- you get so, free tickets, but well, this is true. <laughs> I'll get us both free tickets. I get mm. free double passes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then we'll- point. We'll give you a live feed. For that, we get kicked out for that. That sounds legal. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But anyway, jumping into Venom, The Last Dance. I've seen all of the Spider-Mans, all of the Venoms. You've seen none of the Venoms, some of the Spider-Mans. None of the... Have you seen the new Spider-Mans? I've seen the first one. I don't know, which, I don't know what it's even called. No, I have no idea. It has okay. home in the title. I mean, they all do, but I don't know. I don't remember what they're called. No Way Home? Is that what it is? No, nah, No Way Home was a new one. 
And that was where all three of them came in. That's when you got Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield meeting Tom Holland. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. Homecoming, I think. Pretty sure Homecoming. Homecoming? Yeah. Yep. Whatever that and is. It, the one with uh, the vulture. Yeah, that's the first one. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Michael Keating was that, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. Yeah. yeah. Homecoming, yeah. there it is. And then you've seen the three two Maguire ones. The Sam Raimi ones. Yes, yes, they're great. Well, the first two are great. Yeah. <laughs> the third's yeah. a fucking dumpster fire. The third one was like the studio needed was like we need to include all of these things. And he's like, Oh, this is yeah. ridiculous. And it was just Sam Raimi fighting with the studio, fighting with like everyone was just trying to get a fucking piece of the pie. Yeah. And no one really got what they wanted. And then you've seen the Andrew Garfield ones? Yes. Yeah. Which oh. number two is hot garbage, but I don't, I don't hate number one. I didn't mind number, number one. One's, yeah, number one's pretty entertaining. Mm. Um, I, love, I love Emma Stone. Anything she's in, I'm going to have a little bit of a, a little bit of a tick anyway. Yep. Uh, and number two is <laughs> fucking hilarious yeah. on the rewatch. That, right. That's it. And then, yeah, Homecoming. And then none of the new ones besides Homecoming. And I haven't seen any of the Venoms or... Yeah. Yeah. Whatever. So, well, the, the first the first Venom was just about Eddie Brock being down on his luck, et cetera, and then finding Venom and him dealing with Venom. And then you've got number two, which is all about Carnage. Carnage gets introduced. Carnage is so good, played by Woody Harrelson. Unfortunately, the rating yeah. let it down because they needed they played it safe and was like, oh, we want heaps of people to be able to see it instead of going like dark and R and gruesome like Venom is. They were like, oh, we're going to do silhouettes for the death scenes. Which massively yeah. hurts this, massively, but it doesn't hurt the same revenue. thing in here. Yeah. Doesn't hurt their revenue, which is really annoying because the symbiotes are cool. The symbiotes have always been cool, which is annoying. Yeah. I think that's what, uh, I, you know, I'll say this now. I'll, I'll say this later, but I'll say this now. There are times where this is like dipping its toes in the dead pool. I uh, get it. And mm-hmm. it, uh, it doesn't hit the mark. Because it can't be as crude and as and as balls to the wall as Deadpool can. Yep. Which definitely hit definitely lets it down. So we've got Eddie and Venom, who we've been with for the last two movies. They're on the run this time. So they're facing pursuits from both worlds. As circumstances tighten, they're compelled to make a heart wrenching choice that could mark the end of their symbiotic partnership. So yep, that's the whole yep. movie in two sentences. Yep. Pretty yep. much. So this this is definitely, and this also hinders it because they are trying to set up for Spider Man Four. They were yep. like, "That's his whole purpose." How do we get this across so that this so Spider Man can become the black suit Venom symbiote? This is the full setup for that, and it's so disappointing. They have a big bad that's in it for very very small amount of time, which is I always say his name wrong, but Knoll Kroll. However you pronounce it. I think it's null. Like null, null and vo- null. Yeah, the K throws me. Dyslexia boy. Right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so, like, he's so cool. He's like a massive big bad. And if, like, yep. like he is going to be absolutely cool as long as they, they do it right. And he's not like a Morpheus. Like, Morpheus, my God, that thing was a travesty. That was one of the Morpheus. Yeah. Morpheus is the Matrix. Morpheus, yeah. The one that Jared Leto played. Morbius. Yeah. Morbius, yeah. The human vampire. That sucked. Like that was hard to watch. And they played it safe. Watch they it. couldn't they couldn't show blood. So they went this like, oh, you have to drink blue vials of blood, which fills oh, that's you stupid. up like blood. Yeah. A vampire story with no blood. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah, it was done. I don't I, I can't, I can't how can understand. how can Twilight get vampires better than Morbius? That's right. odd. Yep. Yeah. So we've got Eddie Brock, who's obviously just like he's after the end of the second film, he's in the bar, and this is where that time multiverse is all coming in. We get the the portals. He gets ripped out into a new time paradox world, wherever you want to call it, multiverse. Pulled out, and then all of a sudden, because he has died before, he him and Venom have created a key, and then the key is what is needed to unlock uh, Null. So. You know, that's this is the entire setup, and then yeah, yeah. freeze null because he was supposedly imprisoned Locked. by the symbiotes. 
Yep. He's also the leader of the symbiotes. So he created the symbiotes. So he's the creator. He's like their father, but because he's just a power hungry, narcissist, mean symbiote person, he they he used to just destroy the symbiotes for fun. But and then just, just recreate them. And then these these things under his power, which is the bad guys in this movie, which is also stupid. Why is there's this big bad and all we see him fight with the whole time is more or less his guard dogs. Mm -hmm. uh, why does this guy have these fucking crazy dog, which are, which are super, super more powerful than the symbiotes. Uh, and yet he got imprisoned. Yeah. Like did he not have those dogs back then. Did he create them too? He's Since only, he's only sort of like just created those ones. Like there he's, he's an attack dog sort of things. Where he made okay. the symbiotes and then the symbiotes all powered up. So you like you see all the symbiotes have different types of powers. So they like coordinate yep. an attack to lock him away. Because yep. you see like the symbiotes take over different um people. So we've got uh Juno Temple who plays Dr. Teddy uh yep. Payne, 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 however you want to say. First character from first character from Ted Lasso in the show in the movie. Yeah, so it took me a little while. I was like, where have I seen you from? And I was like, ah, mm -hmm. that's where I've seen you. So, Did you recognise the other actor from Ted Lasso as well? Uh, no. Who was that? Was that Strickland? Uh, no, Cristo Fernandez is the barman, just the Spanish barman. Oh, Mexican that's barman, right. right. That's right. Yeah. And he plays uh, in he plays Danny Rojas. Danny Rojas. Yeah, Danny Rojas. Danny cool. Rojas. <laughs> That's right, Rojas is cool. yeah. yeah, yeah, he's great. He wasn't in it for very long. Nothing in this, he's nothing in this. No, yeah. No. So like, it's it's these guard dogs. All of a sudden, every time he goes full symbiote, he sends off a signal, and then they chase him. This is a chase oh, film awesome. the entire time, yeah. to the point where it was like we're going to throw in some cameos because we've got yeah. the the um. What was it? Uh, Miss Chen, who was the convenience store worker in the other films where he would like, she knew about Venom and they sort of that, had like a, a uh, back and forth. <laughs> that whole fucking scene. The we scene. know, yes, they know that changing form into full Venom is going to instantly spawn this monster that can kill you. Mm -hmm. I need to dance. I need to dance with her. What the fuck? What the fuck? I hate when movies make decisions that no one in the real world would ever make. Yep. Yep. So, like, it was just, it was just, I don't know. It was, they were trying to set up for something, but they just, it was like a, an annoying prologue that didn't really do anything. It was like, I'm still waiting for the big bad. Like, there was an end fight scene. Some of it was cool. Some of it was like, oh, this is convenient. Cause then we get introduced to another symbiote who has like super speed. And then it's just like, all right, let's, what are we doing here? Where's the big bad? Like it, it never really felt like there was a threat going on no, pretty much the it entire was time. Fighting the hound. Yeah. Like normally you get this him post credits. Yeah. Like normally you get the, the chase scenes for the first, I don't know, what, half an hour. And then it's like, oh, here's the big bad. And then we go into dealing with an actual big villain rather than just running the entire time. Yep. Running from the police because he's a Tom Hardy's character's wanted man. Running from the fucking the the alien police who were trying to capture Venom and kill Tom Hardy and running from alien watchdogs, guard dogs. And and yet despite all that, he gets bored in Mexico and decides to go back to America so he can blackmail someone in New York. Don't yep. fucking know. I don't <laughs> fucking know. This movie was so fucking stupid. I've heard the first two, the parts of this that I admittedly didn't mind. At first I was like, this is annoying, but it, it wore me down, uh, was the interactions where, you know, Venom's, Venom's kind of fun. And I've heard that number two especially leans into that chaos more where he just says random shit all the time and has little one-liners. And that's when it kind of feels like Deadpool, but not quite as great. Um, the There's one part. That I did laugh at where you you're quoting it before we even started recording, where he's like, We are Venom. Yeah. It's like, and I was like, What are you? And Tom Hardy goes, We are <laughs> Venom, Venom, we're Venom, Venom. <laughs> <It> just <laughs> made me laugh. 
one even old Invader Zim joke. And yeah, like that's, you know, when, when it's, when it's that it's funny. And when it's like the, um, like an old married couple internal dialogue, that's when it's not too bad. I haven't seen the other two. I've heard that gets by this point, it's kind of tiresome, but I haven't seen the first two. So for me, it was kind of fun. Yeah. Like but I, I enjoy that. Fuck all of that. Yeah. Yeah. But there was not enough. Not enough. Yeah. Right. So also, I really like Tom Hardy. I reckon he's great. I like him as yep. Eddie Brock. It's not the it's not quite the Eddie Brock that I'm used to from like the comics, but I think he's sure. he's done a he's done a really good job over the, the three films. I like yep. him. I like that just him roaming around in crocs and just <laughs> like I don't know. I like yeah, Tom just Hardy. searching for shoes. I yeah. somebody too. He's fucking brilliant in Picky Blinders. He's one of the best characters and he's even in it the whole time. Also, Venom's voice is Tom Hardy. Tom Hardy voices Venom. Oh, really? And they just like pitch shift it. Yep. So that's just sure. him doing it. I, I like that. It was cool in the first film. I feel like yep. Ve- Venom gets more dialogue in the first two films rather than this one. Yeah, and uh, that was that was like it would be more entertaining if I got more of that. It almost feels like they were like, well, look, we've got to make another Venom movie, but we can't spend as much money on CGI budget. We need to cut Venom out of it way more. Like, it honestly feels like they wanted less Venom because of dollars. Yeah, they were also like, oh, we need to set this up so that you guys split and we need Spider-Man to yep. get, get Venom. What's the cheapest way possible? Yeah, like it was just, I yep. don't know. I enjoyed it, but I also didn't like it at the same time. Like, I was really confused. I was like, "What? what is happening? It, just, to me, it was also just the amount of little side stories that didn't need to exist. Who gives a fuck about Ted Lasso girl, uh, her story about her brother and how she electrocuted, she got struck by lightning and he died because they're holding hands and all. Like, it meant nothing to the story. It meant literally nothing. Uh, and who gives a fuck about this hippie family driving around? It was literally just a plot device to introduce, you know, a little bit of like, oh, Venom has a heart, sort of thing. Like fucking Otto Hightower. Why is he? Why is he there? What's he doing? Yeah. Also, do you recognize him as well? Do you recognize Otto? Uh, wasn't mm. he from Game of Thrones or whatever? The uh, Otto Hightower from uh, yeah. House of the Dragon. Dragons. He's the dad. He's yeah. the fucking hippie dad in this, which is weird to see in that <laughs> in those shoes. Yeah. Uh, also, yeah. Like Venom is meant to be strong, but. Just one, one in this. Yeah, like they nerfed him. Like I don't know what was happening. Like I don't I don't understand how one of those bugs were just crazy strong. Like they just destroyed everything. Yeah. It didn't feel I mean I haven't seen the other ones, so I don't really know what in this universe what Venom's power is, but Venom felt pretty nothing in this. It was strong against humans. That was it. Yeah. I thought there was gonna be more of a conflict when when they're on the plane, I was like, okay, here we go. Fucking finally gonna have some like dumb, violent, you know, fucking up shit fight. Uh, and then they jump off the plane. Oh, yeah, okay. and just 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 runs away. Oh. Yep. Uh, okay. And uh, I hope I hope he doesn't get a sidekick. Like I don't need a superhero with a sidekick all the time. So if um our doctor lady is she gonna become the new sidekick? Like Thor's now got. Um, yeah, got a sidekick. We've got all all of them that are getting like sidekicks. I'm like, I don't, I don't need them to have a sidekick. Like, Venom's just meant to be that lone ranger, just jumping from body, being a menace. Like, I just, I don't need it. Just, yeah, I don't know. It's, uh, yeah, there's a lot of things with this. Oh, this is fucking stupid. I, I watched it, but it was a struggle. Yeah, like I, I was not excited for this. I never, I never would watch this if you didn't want to. You know what I mean? I wasn't doing this. Yeah, I do not care. And this is from what I've heard the worst of the three, so I've very much wasted time. But it's whatever. Okay, what would you give it then? Stupid. Uh, yeah. one. Yeah. Anything taken from a half a star is is the bit of banter here and there. But this is to me worse than Rippy. Yeah, right. I gave Rippy a one as well, and this was the same. I did not. Rippy was like kind of laughable. This yeah. was boring. Okay. Look, I. Aggravating. Yeah. 
I didn't mind it. I just was disappointed with them not doing anything for, like, with, I don't know what they were doing. I don't know. It was just an in-between movie, which annoyed me. It was like, yeah. it's like a two, two. Like, there was moments I enjoyed. I enjoy Tom Hardy's performance. It's just, I like Venom. It's just annoying that you got a super bad guy. We didn't see the bad guy. There was no threat in this. No. Just setting up for Spider-Man 4. And the moment you did see, you see the bad guy a few times. Most of the time you see him, he looks like fucking Henry Cavill in The Witcher because all you see is the top of his head with white hair, mm-hmm. long white hair. And then you see him post credits and he looks like a fucking PS3 cutscene. Mm-hmm. It looks yeah. shit. Mm-hmm. That's it. So we'll That's see. very unexciting. So, yeah, we guess we'll see what happens with, with Null. Yeah. I, I hope they do well because he could be so cool. Because we haven't had a yeah. big, we haven't had a big <sighs> bad for a while. No, no one's really hit big bad since like Thanos. Is that what they're trying to do with, with Spider Man now? Is have like a big? Oh, uh, they they're, they're trying to build up a big a big bad. So there's meant to be Kang or Kang, which is meant to be some like big time lord floating head thing. You know the big floating head. He's like the, one of the villains. No, He's, I don't. Okay, well, he's meant to, he's meant to be trying to be the next like big villain in there. They're trying to they were just like, how do we lazily bring back um, Robert Downey Jr. Get him to play Doctor Doom from the multiverse? Yeah. Um. So they just yeah, like Thanos was was really cool because he was a, he was a bad guy. You under you understood what his philosophy was and why he wanted mm-hmm. to just get rid of it. Like that makes the best villains like Doc Ock, a really cool villain because you understand where he's coming from. Yep. But it is you can you can yeah somewhat side with them. Yeah. Otherwise you just need to go in a super super cool it's harder to do like big bad. Like you just the person that you hate. Like you just you just need to hate them. Yeah. yeah, but I think that works better when it, yeah, there's a almost as a series when you've got time to you got time to hate them rather than just they're bad because they want to kill people. Like I feel like there needs to be more to a bad guy, especially these days. Like you need to dislike them on a personal level, not just oh they just they want to kill people, therefore they're bad. We must stop them from killing people. That's yeah. not enough anymore. Yeah, so I guess we'll see. I don't. I don't know. I don't know where they'll be yep. able to... Should have given Venom to Chris Morgan, the guy who made the Fast and Furious movies. He would just <laughs> fucking make this shit so stupid. It'd be fun. Imagine him in a race car going, Venom, Venom, Venom. That'd actually be funny. I'd laugh at that. Yeah. Like, imagine him. Like, the thing, like, the, the, Chris Morgan's whole mentality is just, you've got to go bigger and better than the last movie. And he's made 10 Fast and Furious, 11 with fucking Hobbs and Shaw and stuff. Like, Isn't that the same like, with... Um... What's his name? Michael Bay. Yeah. I don't think Michael Bay knows how to direct, though. That's the problem with him. <laughs> like, you can't follow anything. Just you can't follow any of his shit. Just floundering around. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how he's got so, so successful, to be honest with you. But no, I mean, it's sort of like a writing perspective. Just just a thing like this where you're not, you're not watching it for good storytelling and, and good characters and things like that. You're just watching it for, for dumb, fun, action, violence, you know, funny moments here and there, whatever. That's what this needs to be. Like, this needs to be the same font as Fast and Furious. Yeah, fair. Anyway, yeah. one, two for you. Yep. Let's cut. Let's cut some time. Ooh, look at you. <laughs> <laughs> the time cut. The newest one out now on Netflix. We have already seen a version of this film, which uh, was an Amazon Prime Video original. Which I always forget the name of that one. It was like I can't totally remember. killer, totally killer. Which is by far the better version. So, oh yes, if if you want to watch one of these time traveling horror killer serial killer films, go watch that one. Because mm-hmm. unfortunately, Netflix missed the the they missed the ballpark on this one. Because yeah, yeah missed yeah. the ballpark completely. It didn't even come to the stadium. No, my review of this on Letterboxd is totally killer walked. So time cut could crawl. Okay, yeah, that's clever. What are you? It's Mr. not word Smith. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's this is not this tries to be something, 
and misses it completely. Oh, it tries to be so like, what's the word? Like emotionally reactive, not reactive. Like he wants to provoke that. Like oh, yes, emotionally manipulative. Yeah, she's my sister. I always wanted a sister because the whole premise is like- She wasn't even your sister. She bought, She died before you were fucking born. You have no connection to her. That pisses me off still. You're not. <laughs> she's not your sister. You have no connection to her. Oh, every year reminded of her death. What death? You were not even born. You have no connection to this person besides photos. It means nothing to you. And she gets compared to the sister, which happens you, in like- They look what? nothing alike. It happens so much like no, besides skin color, which is fucking racist as hell. They have a different nose, they have a different mouth, a different smile, a different eyes. Sorry, this really fucked me off. <laughs> Go for it, introduce it though, before we get into it. So, Time Cut is the newest film out on Netflix. It's a high school student accidentally travels back to 2003, which isn't that long ago, and decides to stop the serial killer who he murdered is. her sister. Boom, boom, yep. boom. I don't remember anyone wearing such bright colours in 2003. Yeah, 2003 was like still the dregs of 1990s where there's still some bright colours and layering of clothes and shit. Like, I think the clothing, the one thing I did I did write in my notes that with this that I think was done well was I kept trying to find things that were inaccurate time-wise. I was looking for technology that was wrong, looking for even the D&D books in his room, uh, in his, like, trailer, whatever it was. They were accurate for the time as well. They're from 2001. Okay. Like, the, I kept trying to find things. I was like, ah, that's not 2003. But I think it was that was probably the only thing with it that was satisfactory. It, it gets a C. Okay. Everything else. So... For me, they went, all right, here is every major trope we can think of, including film yep. tropes and all sorts of, including, like, sexuality, including whatever, like, identity. They were like, let's put this in a bag. Let's shake yep. it up. Let's yep. spill it out. And this is mm-hmm. this is what you get. I was like, what? what is this? Like, what is happening? There was yep. – we've – We've got no connection to this girl. This girl's just presented and it's like, oh, my sister died. Ah, oh, my parents always sort of think about my sister. Oh, I get compared to my sister. And then she goes back in time and then all of a sudden she's like, oh, that's my sister. And I'm like, oh, so I don't care. I don't yep. I don't have any emotional connection to you. I don't care about your sister. I don't care about this film. No. I was like, even when the killer got revealed, I was like, oh, okay, cool. I, I still don't care. Like, I fucking called it. Yeah, I called it a really early. I'm like, it's him. I didn't, I didn't think it was him from the future. I thought it was him current. I was like, no, nah, it's him. But it wasn't. I was slightly wrong. Um, yeah, and you mentioned, you know, the connection. And, and where I think, I'm, I'm going to compare this to Totally Killer the whole way through, because Totally Killer is good. Uh, where where Totally Killer does it well is she goes back in time and hangs out with her mum. And that makes sense. You have a connection there. You know that person. And you're like, oh, my God, that's what she looked like when she was younger. Like, oh, my, it'd be so weird seeing my parents as children or as teenagers. But I'm reminded of that event that happened before I was born. Like, it's such, it's such fucking bullshit. It means it's, so, it's yeah. Like you say, it's emotionally manipulative, but never done well. Because yeah. it's aimed at babies. I, went, I spoke to my partner afterwards. I'm like, this is aimed at fucking children. It's it's TV fourteen. It's like Peggy thirteen. It's Peggy seven. It's made for children. It's made for like young teenagers. You never see any murders. You see some blood. It's it's so safe and stupid. So if Disney made a, a slasher film, I suppose yeah. <laughs> if, if if fucking Pixar made a slasher like live action, <laughs> yeah, uh, it's just it misses the mark everywhere. Keep going, please. And they're so serious the entire way through. Like totally killer was actually yep. kind of was funny. Like they were wise. cheek. Yeah, they were, they were cracking jokes. This was just yep. oh, I really want to know my sister. Why do I always get compared to my sister? And then yep. they, she sees her like family because she was like, Oh, I don't know if I should tell my family I've got uh, an internship at NASA or whatever it was. I was like, okay, why NASA? Are you a rocket scientist? What is happening here? I know. I'm also so sick of just 
NASA being like the generic high achiever. I'm a, I'm a, I'm going to NASA. We're going to send this to NASA. We need to speak to NASA. I'm sick of NASA just being the fucking, the umbrella term they just throw in everything all the time. But again, yeah, end of babies. And then when she does tell her parents, they're like, oh, your parents should be so proud. And then it was like, you could see the cut for a long time where it was like, you're meant to get an emotional reaction of that. She's yep. finally got the, the yep. approval the, of her parents. The slow crawl on her face. Like, <laughs> oh, look how emotional this scene is. Oh, it's so yeah. yeah. And then you've got the the sister, Summer, who's like the, I don't know, I guess she's the super popular girl, which, of course. yeah, we get that. Another, another, another trope box ticked. And it turns out that she was afraid to come out to her, to her person. Yep, trait box ticked. Yep. Oh, 2003 gender, oh, not gender, uh, fucking sexuality was confusing in 2003. Yeah, we know. Yeah. But again, um, the fucking dumb babies that watched this didn't know that. Yeah, and they were just like, here's everything that strolled in there. The one thing that I did like was that when Lucy, like, stopped the the Quinn from getting thrown in the river, that's where they're like, that's the diversion part where it changes. And I was like, okay, well, at least you've got kind of rules for your time travel I was like oh, sort of but I was they, like, don't yeah. set, they don't set rules to break rules so they can do what the fuck they want yeah like he, he like, on point is like oh you can't do anything to change time because you're gonna cause a rift in the time space continuum and it could end the entire universe but in the end she goes back to live in 2003 she's is she just missing in 2000 whatever now and like if you go back to 2003 and just live there with your family, surely that has implications to your family giving birth to you at all. Like, he mentions Back to the Future, and, and they're, like, yeah, but they're fucking with the possibilities. There's a whole point where she was like, oh, if my sister didn't die, I wouldn't have been born. So, like, yes. t- technically, wouldn't she phase out of existence? Yes. I thought it would have made more sense... For uh, Summer, the, the sister who died in 2003, for her to go forward in time and for her to meet the parents and, and be like, hey, Dad, you work at Sonar, the place that invented a time machine, which he must know about, right? And guess what? Time machine went and got her and brought her back to the future. That would have been a way more happy ending than I'm going to live in 2003 because it suits me more. Like... <sighs> It means it's it's so hollow and stupid, and it, it creates more holes and problems. And the same yeah. with, like again, the the boy, whatever his name was, I don't care. Queen. Uh, Queen was it? Yeah. He even points out when when he finds out that Summer's the last victim, he's like, "We should be driving across state lines right now." Hundred percent, you should be. Why the fuck are you staying in this town if you know there's a murder on the loose? Wouldn't you just fucking leg it? Get the hell out of there. You got a car. It's not like you can't drive. Oh, we're teenagers. We can't drive. You, you can. Leave. You can get a bus. Save her. You can get, get, a, get a bus. Why not? Do anything. Like, he's... When characters point out plot holes, it means that the writers know there's a fucking problem here and they just chose not to give a shit. They're like, put the head in the sand. There we go. Yeah. We've got, it's we've made got for our, babies. We've got our paycheck. Away we go. I struggled with this. I was like, hmm. This is a big, this is big tough. This was like, in the same way that Venom was, this made me angry. Like, there is there is potential here. There is a way to do this correctly. And not only is it ignorance and incompetence, but it's like willful indifference. You're intentionally making something dumber because you don't care. Their mask is also very similar to Totally Killer. The mask... Yeah, the killer oh, mask. Oh yeah, he wears like a Mike Myers mask almost. Yeah, yeah. It, I don't really. And just stumbling it onto the time machine. That's just in your garage. Yeah, I know. It's convenient. Literally just walks in like, oh, time machine. And it happens to be set to the right day. I know that makes sense because that's when the murders happen. Uh, but yeah, it's just like you say. It's just plot convenience as a plot convenience and. Plot hole after plot hole, and I don't care about anything. I don't care about any of the fucking characters. Nope. Nope. Even the death scenes weren't great. Just... No, they're stupid as fuck. You couldn't, couldn't see anything. The the no. woman, the girl who gets murdered by her face getting pushed into an escalator. How's it going to kill you? 
how it how is that it might scalp you it might pull the hair off your head maybe I don't know. Have but you ever had a shoelace caught in it? It's pretty terrifying. is going to, is that going to murder you I would murder my shoe that's terrifying might murder your shoe it I might don't have hurt a heart your attack foot it might sprain your ankle I don't know I'd have it's a not heart going attack to fucking leave a big pool of blood and murder you. nah it's it's nah my daughter's got her shoe caught in it once and it was terrifying of course I don't I'm not saying it's not scary <laughs> it's terrifying I'm just saying it's not murderous terrifying <laughs> I don't know <laughs> Oh, this this sucked. This sucked. This was hard. yeah Yeah. and her motivations I got mad at um Lucy because her she's like oh if I save my sister then it means that I don't get to live fucking every single person's life in this entire town benefits more from summer living because the whole town becomes like somehow through these three murders the whole town becomes fucking run down and dilapidated and whatever That was weird. Like, how? How is I don't everyone? know the town never recovered from what from from a few murders like how does that affect the whole economy of the whole entire town I don't fucking know but yeah her selfish reasons like oh my mum like again it's just teenagers making dumb teenage decisions and then dumb teen dumb teenagers watching it going oh yeah I can make side with this character <laughs> Yeah. Oh, well, it sucked. It was a one. I hated it. yeah I'm done talking about it. I look at my notes now I read a fair bit because maybe fucking annoyed me. <laughs> yeah. That's not what else. What else you got for us on this one? Uh, the time machine looked like shit. The fucking inner workings of the time machine were all three D printed, and you could still see the fucking print layers on it. Again, no one gave a shit. Not even props department gave a shit. Like no one, none of the writing team, none of the directing team, none of the cinematographer, no one gave a shit about making this movie. No one. I meant to watch this and not get mad about that. Mm. Mm. Uh, Right. Anything else? the boy 20 years later didn't look old enough. Uh, and yeah, what happened to her in 2024? Is she just missing now? Are, are her parents even more stricken with fucking grief because they've now lost two daughters? Again, selfish, dumb fuck decisions that the audience is not meant, not meant to think about. I'm not the right audience. I'm too smart for this movie. <laughs> I am. I think too much. Like I meant to watch this and go, the the fucking slasher. The Yeah, well, we can move on to another slasher. yeah, it's half a star. Fuck this. <laughs> yeah, well, we'll move on to Carved, which is another. Yes, you want to? You could call it teen horror. I guess the other one was teen horror. To me, to me, carved is more of a stoner comedy. Ah, uh, yeah, I guess there are moments. There are moments in Yeah, this, definitely, but it's it's favorite thing I watched this week. I'll be honest, <laughs> straight so. away. We picked this movie based on DJ Quals being in it because, Yeah. as as you know, if you listen to the last episode, we were raving about New Guy. That was very, very fun. Banger. This is about a group of survivors find themselves trapped in a historical reenactment village on Halloween where they must unite to battle a sentient, vengeful a pumpkin. Boom, boom, boom. I've got to say, the first 40 minutes of this film I hated, I was like, I don't want to watch this anymore. Like, the first... Yeah, I was bored for a lot of it, but The last half an hour I actually really enjoyed. I thought that was <laughs> I thought the last half an hour was actually quite fun. And it yeah, was yeah. and like I was saying, what's wrong with uh, the last garbage shit we watched, Time Cut, without trying to be really serious, this is super dumb and silly and like, you know, it's, to me it's stone of comedy, like it's it I doesn't... thought <laughs> the first half an hour they were actually trying to be super serious. Yeah, it honestly did feel a bit like that until I, it comes. It takes a little while to realize, like, ah, oh, this is really dumb, <laughs> and, and I think intentionally. Yeah. So we are following pretty much Kira and Trevor. They're our they're our two main ones. So in this town there's a chemical spill and a year before Halloween, this chemical spill has mutated this pumpkin. This Yeah. pumpkin, we have Kira, who is a play writer, director, and then she's she has a play on 
and we get the the friendship group. So we get Cody and Maddie as well in there. So I think from memory, Cody's the boyfriend of Kira, and then Maddie's meant to be the the token hot girl in the the horror film where Trevor has a a crush on Maddie, and then there in the play you get a whole scene where Trevor's like being creepy. Well, not well. He's looking through the the fence or the hole in the side of the stage, backstage, wherever he was, being like, "Oh yeah," and then they make they try and make a <laughs> a penis joke on it. And then we get introduced to our main catalyst, which is Clint, who is our typical stoner bloke who's working for this corn tr- food truck. It's yeah. Like corn on a cob, I'm assuming. Yeah. Whose dad is, um, oh, what's the actor's name? Oh, uh, Chris Elliott, who is Take My Strong Hand from Scary okay. Movie 2. He's also and in something about Mary as well, where he gets all. Hives. He's in lots of stuff. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's in um, uh, f- uh, fuck. How about your mother? He's in lots of shit. Um, yeah. but he's like almost like sexually attracted to his fucking corn van. <laughs> like, it's, it's so dumb. That's <laughs> silly. Yeah, but. We've got Clint. Clint is the stereotypical bully that they put into movies. Like he looks like the stereotypical bully that they yeah. put put into a high school film, even though he looks yeah. forty. Like it's it's bizarre. But he, he's is just a stoner. He's a stoner, and he plays a stoner quite well. He's stoned out in the pumpkin field, and he finds this pumpkin, and he's like, "Ha! Ah, this pumpkin looks silly." Brings it in, and as you know, it's Halloween, so they have a pumpkin carving contest which is apparently a thing i assume it's a thing in america and then the pumpkin doesn't like seeing its kind being carved and goes on a murdering spree for yep the last that's 40 minutes yeah the entire movie that's, <laughs> that's it the acting's not great the acting is quite bad. no it's horrible <laughs> again that's stone of comedy though that to me is yeah, but I, I feel like they got halfway through this film and they were like, mm, I think we need to change the tone because the tone shifts massively. Yeah, I, I need to rewatch because I don't know if it's a tone shift or if it's I didn't really get the tone initially. You know what I mean? Like, I don't know if, if it starts, if I just came into it thinking it was it was going to be taking itself really seriously and trying to be like, kept thinking of... Uh, Oh, what was that fucking movie with a scarecrow from back when we were in t- in high school? Jeepers Creepers. Jeepers Creepers. I, I, love I thought Jeepers it was going to be like, yeah, it was proper scary. Probably not anymore, but at the time it was when I was a kid. Um, that's what I thought this was going to be more like, and I think that's. I'm worried that my mentality might have skewed the start, but it starts really boring. Mm-hmm. Very, very boring. And I was like, I don't care about your play. And then all of a sudden it was like, oh, no, Cody's auditioned without me. He's leaving. He's the, he's yeah. the issue. And I was like, oh, my God, is, we're in for, I know. A, for, a, for a rough trip. Yeah. I, I really disliked the uh, the romance between two characters. Well, I forgot I don't anyone's name in this, but those two characters. Um, yeah. I think it would be better as like a, a friend, best friend's sidekick instead. Yeah. But whatever. Uh, even DJ Quiles, who normally plays a very bizarre sort of like eccentric kind of character, he just yeah. played like a town mayor or whatever he was, like the coordinator yeah. of the he reenactment. Yeah, like he like owned the reenactment park or some shit, yeah, or manager or something like that. Yeah. And he, he nothing played, to like, do. played like a super serious character. And I was like, oh, you're boring. I was like, For I a very remember- short period of time. Yeah, I was like, I remember you as a very fun character normally. Mm-hmm. It, was, it was boring. But then once once the pumpkin goes on its murdering spree, it was like, okay, this is actually pretty funny because it's just yeah, just ridiculous. Like And the deaths cool. are pretty cool. Like they, you know, they go pretty heavy into the gore and it's all nonsense and silly and <laughs> the way yeah. their organs spill out of people's bellies and whatever. Like I like the deaths. And each character had their own little like there were times where it felt like a scary movie in, in silliness when some of the deaths happened. They had their little like last words, and they often often it was a, like a comedic line. Like this was yeah. some yeah. some of it reminded me of the Evil Dead 
like the last half reminded me similar to like how the dead eyes yeah. kill people. And yeah. I was like, yeah. that's not bad. Like these people have obviously the person is a fan of horror. Like the last mm. half, you definitely got all your horror tropes in there. It had a reasonable yeah. mix of like physical effects and like CGI, even though some of the CGI looked terrible. It's like whatever, I guess you're yeah. you're a B you're a B grade horror film. Like you're not I'm looking at the budget. You're not making waves here. But it was like you've done reasonably well. You've you've done a an okay B grade horror film. Like I don't I don't know that you're ever going to uh crack it into no. the, the big but leagues. But again, they knew what they were doing. They knew what they were making. They weren't trying to make this the next fucking saw series or the next whatever. Like they knew their market. They knew what they were capable of. They knew what they could make with the budget. And they made it. Yep. Like, credit where it's due. I'm not considering this good. This is not getting a three or above. Like, it's it's a lot of it's boring. Uh, I don't care about any of the characters. The acting's pretty garbage. Cinematography is nothing special. Like, it, none of it's a quote-unquote good movie. But, you know, for what it is, it's pretty fun. A yeah. lot of it. Well, ha- last half of it. Yeah, I also love it. Maybe half of it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> the first half. Because there were, I'd watch it in two stints. Because like, yeah, the first half I was like falling asleep. I was like, okay, I'm not really paying attention to this. I'm kind of bored. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I I did laugh at the ending, where the way they kill it, I was like, this is so dumb. And then all of a sudden, uh, so oh, with the go on. So they like the the big spoiler is they're fighting in the barn and then. They like trap it with its youngling, and then they get yeah. into the what's it like the wood chipper mower yeah, yeah. sort of thing, like and speed, it'll... feed it into it. Yeah, same as Evil Dead Rise, same thing for some reason, but yeah. yeah. And then they line up all the the baby pumpkins, <laughs> drive <laughs> over them. Like and the shoot's going too fast, <laughs> and like it, it she kept not even hitting some of them, won't even being hit, whatever, from the side angle because she's gone yeah. too quick, and like the machine wasn't getting them fast enough. I laughed but again. Who gives a shit? I laughed at it. Even the ending where it was like all the the pumpkins, then it was the stoner's head, and then it came out of the eye. I was like, "That's, that's yeah, not, it's not that bad. That's not a bad no setup for a sequel." No, and the the fact that a lot of this was practical, like you said, before, the fact that a lot of the practical effects is, is kind of nice. I kind of wish, um, because part of this, like you said before, part of the story is that he's he part the pumpkin. Why am I, why am I giving a gender? Uh, the pumpkin is hunting people down who joined in the carving contest and they kept showing as people were dying or people were being hunted, they kept showing them at the carving contest, you yeah. know, oh, the pumpkins after you because of this reason. I kind of wish they didn't do that for the reason audience had to like, oh, you know, piecing together that it's going after, you know, missing those people and going after those people instead. And that, that way the reveal of the kid, the younger brother being like the target for the majority of the second half. Uh, would have, would have a bit more weight because we would have figured out before the characters did, um, or we would have figured out as the characters did potentially. Yeah, you know, hold your hand a little bit too much, but again, who gives a shit? Like, it's not trying to be anything special or artistic, or you know, I don't think I don't think the storytelling was well thought out. It's just like let's make a dumb fucking movie about a pumpkin killing people. Right, it was even, a short first. Even when Maddie just survives, and yeah. She- how did For she no survive? Reason. I was like, what? yeah. She's like, I like, sprayed. What did you use? Yeah. She she pr- sprayed I pesticides. Combined, yeah, I combined this and that to make a pesticide that scared it away and whatever. And it meant nothing. Like her, her her coming back, it's not like she came back to save the day. It's not like she was one of the, like, the cat game we wanted. She was just, they just wanted her to survive for no fucking reason. So she did. Yeah. Like it's it just... didn't mean anything. <laughs> she wasn't even a pivotal, pivotal character. No, it was just, it was bizarre, but whatever. Like I didn't, I didn't mind the last half of it. No, I I had a pretty fun time with half of this movie, and the other half is just boring and nonsense, and I don't really care. Yep. Uh, but that's yeah. fine. You know, this was never meant to be a good movie. Like I said, you know. Uh, what are you going to give it? It's like a two. I'm right on a two as well. I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend it to anybody. But like, I no, didn't hate, I didn't hate it. Exactly right. And I'd watch another movie of his if he came out with more. Yeah, like probably watch Carb too, know. maybe. 
Yeah, the second one we'll watch it. Like it's it was a good, you know, I'm bored. I'm bored when I'm gonna watch sort of movie. Put this on while I'm on my phone, sort of thing. Yeah. Oh yeah, okay. tongue in see. cheek, fucking stoner comedy horror. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well. Yeah. Oh, a little bit of a disappointing week. Hopefully, next week is gonna live up to it. So we've got Don't Move, which is a new film out now, which is apparently got hearing good things. We've got We yeah. Live in Time, which is a uh, rom com. I believe. Uh, just Garfield. romantic drama. Romantic drama. Okay. Not rom-com. Damn. And then we've got the... <laughs> Sorry. We've got the... Well, I quite like the show. Now, my kids have just finished the uh, original, which is Wizards of Waverly Place. We'll be watching Wizards Beyond Waverly Place. So it is the return of Selena Gomez. And <laughs> I, I don't know his actual name, but it's Justin Russo. Which is his character's name? I don't know. All oh, right, couldn't couldn't tell you what his real name is. The only time I ever watched this was when I come to your house in the morning after the gym, <laughs> and it happened beyond a few times. And I was like, all right, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, I, thought, I never really. I liked it. It was easy to watch. It had some funny moments. It was reasonably clever, but it wasn't like groundbreaking or anything. It was just yeah, it's not one of those Disney shows, but it was just yeah. it was just beyond my time, but. It's interesting because you're older than me, so I don't know like what, what occasions you watch this, but sometimes I used to have hangovers on a Saturday morning and I used to just put on channel whatever. Mindless just... fucking yeah, yeah, that's fair. Yeah. You know when you're hung over and you're like, oh, I cannot focus on anything. And it's nah. just, just this is I just, just need Yeah, I just need <laughs> sounds. <laughs> <laughs> it's like this is perfect. Yeah. You just just lay there in zombie mode going, oh. Maybe we should get Drunk one night and then watch Wizards Beyond Waverly Place the day after. No, we're old now. That hangover. We're hangover, old. That hangover's lasting for a week. <laughs> yeah. No, oh, thank you. I don't know if I can do a week anymore. No way. No fucking no. way. No. Oh. Uh, good shit. Yeah. Well, not good shit. Three very average movies, but. Yeah. You know what to do if you're listening on Spotify, give us a five star rating. Listen on YouTube, make sure you like, comment, subscribe. If you want us to watch anything, let us know. Put in the comments, join the Discord, do all that sort of stuff, and we'll see you guys later. We'll and do tell your up. friends. Oh, beat me to it. Look at you. Sorry, I think yeah. you're getting there. <laughs> so, tell your friends, boys. Tell your friends. Love you, bye.